Hello and welcome to a spooky. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, spooky. It's the Movie Bunker podcast with me, Matt. It's me, Chris. <laughs> we should probably give us like the Simpsons do, like proper spooky names. Oh, Yours actually, kind of lends itself because, like, creepy Chris. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely creepy Chris. That's what I've been known as for many years. Morbid Matthew. Happy Halloween, Matthew. I mean, obviously, it's a, a celebration that you live and die for. I, it's one of these celebrations that I resent. <laughs> I just walk around and just like, oh, look. It's like a scene from E.T. on Halloween's Eve. In the 80s, when we were growing up, it was a bin bag. Uh, there was well, there was three choices, wasn't there? There was if you had some fake plastic teeth, you were a Dracula. If you uh, didn't have parents that went out and bought stuff, then uh, then you were either a ghost, which meant that you had a spare sheet knocking around, yeah, um, or a zombie, which fundamentally meant that your mum whacked on a bit of her green lipstick from the seventies and red lipstick and turned you into a zombie and tore up some clothes that she didn't really want you having anymore. Yeah, you could be a witch as well if you had those kind of plasticky glow in the dark fingers that extend yes. things. Yeah, but that was it. That was or, or, or if your parents were medical profession, a mummy. But yeah. that was it. That, that was there was no other choices. And no, werewolf never happened because that would require require some sort of prosthetic mask. Oh, I would dream of a werewolf outfit. I mean, I was obsessed with werewolves as a child. Is that because of Teen Wolf? Yeah, definitely. Teen Wolf and uh, The Howling and a couple of other movies that I watched but didn't, you know, wasn't allowed to watch American Werewolf in London and that. I just wanted to be a werewolf. Isn't that a bit weird? I mean, I'm all right now. <laughs> oh, dearie me. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> That's a bit much. <laughs> if we were to draw a graph of my process, of my method, something like this, Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Ian, action. Wizard, you shall not pass! Cut! Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Ian. Um, let me just uh, fill in any new in, um, listeners into what our purpose in life here on the Movie Bunker podcast. Um, you might have seen the title of the film that we're doing, uh, Slender Man, there's no point keeping this a secret. I think, oh, this is one of those podcasts where they, they take a film and they, they rip it to poop because it's rubbish. Um, but that's that never was our purpose here. Our purpose was to find those shitty films uh, that were languishing in the below five categories of IMDb and to watch them and find something in them that which is decent and good and so we could point at the critics and go no you're wrong this film's amazing i always thought it would happen every other week maybe every third week that we'd find a diamond in the rough but um i think we've had like one film which you kind of liked <laughs> of like what's this like episode 56 57 yeah we're on 56 57 episodes now but yeah there's no uh, never been really anything that we've both agreed on wholeheartedly was good enough to to not go or remain in the bunker the fictional oh sorry not the fictional <gasps> the bunker um right. But I think, to, to be honest, some of the films that uh, our guests pick when we do have special guests are the ones that usually are the ones that are on the high end of the low. Do you know what I mean? They're they're top, they're top poor. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they, they get a bit more rope, I think, than, yeah. than we allow ourselves. They're allowed to sort of pick. Well, although to be fair, I think most of the ones they've picked are have been around the fives. Yeah, possibly yeah. a bit higher. But yeah, they they tend to. Uh, focus on one that does actually have some <laughs> redeeming quality. Well, the, thing makes... is the, the good thing is that, you know, the kind of benchmarks that we use are IMDB and, and Rotten Tomatoes, and they're actually quite, they're wildly different in terms of sometimes uh, our IMDB rating can be around six, and then you, you check out, oh, that's far too high. And then you check uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and it's got an audience score or critic score of like three, and it's a complete panage. Um, yep. So you can, right. like, you've always got two two sort of sources there to sort of play off each other and just to sort of make a, uh, an episode work, so to speak. But um, this film, uh, Slender Plot, I mean, Slender Man. Uh, was... <laughs> Actually, before we get into Slender Man, can I, I'm going to throw something over a curveball at you and, and do something that we normally do to our guests. Um, but I think it's the holiday season, right? It's just the most wonderful time of the year. It's the Halloween season. Um, what is your favourite Halloween film, Chris? Obviously not this one. My favourite Halloween film. Well, I mean, well, you know, spooky film. Spooky well, film. I, I've got to say, you know, it's a good question, Matthew. It's a good question, but I w- I've got to say that mm, I do like horror without the gore. So I, I'm a bit more of a kind of uh, spooky, spooky person. So this this film would be up my street if it was any good. But for me, I think 
the scariest film I've ever seen would be uh, the Blair Witch Project. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it was a, it was a, a perfect storm for me. Um, that film, the first thing, probably the first horror or spooky film that I've ever gone to the cinema to see because it's not a show right. I'll seek out on the big screen. Um, it's usually something I'll watch with the volume rather low and um, you know with a cushion at my disposal because <laughs> I'm easily scared to be honest. But yeah, no, that film fucked me up for weeks. <laughs> It's one of those weird films, isn't it, that um, hasn't stood the test of time, not because in itself it's a bad film, but because it got like um, made as a blueprint for success and then just sort of rehashed, 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 rehashed by various mm. different paranormal activities, da, 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 da. Mm. to a point that they, they've gone off that spiel now, but it, we kind of, you kind of watch it now and go, oh, God, found footage. And, but before Blair Witch, there really was no, no other found footage films, right? It was... And it was amazing. And the, the, the marketing for it all and everything was superb. A bit, like oh, yeah. Clover, a bit like Cloverfield in a way where they, and it's completely different, but it, they tried to capture um, some of the element of surprise and, and the mystery around it. And obviously going as far as creating, you know, the website and, and the back in the, in the early days of you know, the internet and stuff really, because it kind of was. Um, yeah, yeah drip feeding stuff to you and real life stories about this thing, the witch and or the Blair witch. And I think at the time I, w- I worked really early in the morning, like a five o'clock start. I was ever, I had a shit job and I used to make my way to the bus stop and in the dark, in the pitch dark. <laughs> and, um, I, I couldn't, this is so sad. I mean, I'm in my twenties, right. But I had to walk in the middle of the road. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't walk next to the road. <laughs> But to get to the bus stop where, where I was, you know, on my way to work, I would just walk in the centre so that I had enough space either side of me to see the potential hazard, like a witch that might, you know, jump out of a wheelie bin and grab me. <laughs> and going to sleep at night, I was, I was just sure there was things creeping around my room. It was, a, I don't know what happened. I was just a weird, it was a weird... You got state. heavily affected by it. It's my weird early 20s where I just was like, fuck... How about you? What's your what's your go to Halloween film? Uh, but, but it's hard to pick between American Wealth in London and Poltergeist. Poltergeist yeah. is proper scary. I don't I don't like watching that film because it actually does scare me. Still, yeah. I think now even now it scares me that film. Uh, the scene where she just turns around, all the chairs are on the table. Ugh, yeah, yeah. I like it. Not not nice. And uh, it's, you see, you don't have to be you know hugely hugely um like you know horrific to be scary something as simple like a chair on a table um american wealth was just a, a brilliant film i think that's a that's a good gateway drug to horror if you're a, if you're a young and and you want to get yourself into horror it's probably not even a 15 anymore actually it probably is because it's got some sexy bits isn't it, isn't it? well i think because because of the body body more thing and all the kind of that, that was stuff. brilliant right yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. that Practical movie werewolf effects yeah, it's similar to like you know dog soldiers in a way. If you remember that movie from like yeah into the nineties, where they actually used props. That's good. Like ten, up. fifteen years later, right? Yeah, getting people dressed up uh, and doing stuff for real is really quality. Uh, adds to adds to the effect amazingly. But uh, you know the creepiness of stuff is what what I I love. You know, and sometimes it's TV programs can do it. So there was a really early BBC fake documentary thing or live event called ghost hunters or something i remember this yeah because it got massively Sarah Green. yeah and philip schofield and everyone watched it thinking it was just because at the time they were children's tv presenters fundamentally it, right? was, they it, were... wasn't, it wasn't philip schofield it was um it was uh her, sarah green's husband and it was uh yeah michael parkinson and craig charles was in it as well actually oh was he yeah 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 and it was about a haunted house and it was like like one of those not fly on the wall, but it was like a hidden, hid, uh, like a camera. Yeah, yeah. Thing, and got loads of um, complaints for the BBC because you know yeah. people thought it was real. And uh, basically, what happens is the the, the ghost is spotted uh, as a viewer. You see it, but the pe- presenters and the people in, in the haunted house don't see it. And you see it's all the yeah, and you're getting scratched and stuff. Yeah, Mister Mister Mr. Pipes, the... and um. Yeah, and then eventually it just transcends, uh, uh, descends into madness. Like uh, at the end, he's you know, Parkinson's left in an empty, abandoned uh, studio, going slight, going crazy, and the lights go off, don't they? And then it, yeah. uh, there was a horrible story about a lad who killed himself, and um, because of it, and it's you know, crikey, I mean, these things. 
you just wouldn't you would, it wouldn't happen now but people were so naive it's like the radio it's like the tv equivalent of uh, war of the worlds you know yeah, yeah it was kind of along the same lines yeah because completely befuddled people because so these presenters they saw and and the style of it was just in one of these sort of like ground force kind of ways so i said hi yeah haha, we're gonna go to this haunted house now oh okay brilliant and then you know then actual not actual but actual in terms of physical things started happening and then yeah, I mean, you, you saw Mr. Pipes. It's all very scary. Okay, right, enough of this good shit. We pick Slender Man. And here's the trailer. Okay, Twitter poll. If you could stay one age forever, what would it be? What about the age we are right now? Seriously? Sometimes I wish we could just get out of this stupid town together. What the cops ask you? They wanted to know if she ever talked about running away. Check this out. Here is the last site she visited. Slender Man. He preys on innocent youth. What was that? I think this is how we get Katie back. Those who hear the three bells toll accept his invitation. When you hear the first, you must close your eyes. Katie! Opening your eyes only once you've heard the third. He gets in your head like a virus. Oh. Something he takes. He drives mad. Once you see him, you can't unsee him. Another one of those trailers where a bunch of shit happens that doesn't actually happen in the film, which I find annoying yeah there's a there's a couple of clips scenes that were filmed that were jettisoned off to to make it a bit more marketable once they realized that it was a proper turkey um the plop synopsis is this in a small town in massachusetts a group of friends fascinated by an internet law of the slender man attempt to prove that he doesn't actually exist until one of them mysteriously goes missing it's directed by sylvain white uh, writers David Burke and Victor Serge, and stars, you know, a quite unknown bunch of actors, really. Fundamentally, completely unknown cast, right? Yeah. Joey King, who is this kind of the poster girl, you perceive her to be the main uh, character because she's on this kind of poster for the for the movie. However, I think she gets less to do than some of the the, the minor uh, the other characters, and I don't I'm not sure why that happened. But I think because Joey King has been on TV or in a film before, they they put her front and center on any marketing they did. So there's four girls essentially for uh, that uh, they're into this lure this slender man out of its retirement or whatever it, wherever whatever it's doing, uh, cutting his toenails. I expect uh, Julia Goldana <laughs> Tellis plays Hallie and Jazz Sinclair plays Chloe and Anali. Annalise Basso plays Katie. There are some adults in this movie. <laughs> there aren't very many adults in this movie. No, nah, there's a couple of parents and that's about um, it. Right? And there's a couple of jocks. Uh, well, that's a bit unfair. Uh, there's a few teachers and there's some, some love interests. What are your first impressions of this? Because, you know, neither of us are real horror hounds, are we? We've said that. No, before. I mean, but I think we probably would have both heard of Slender Man before. So the, I guess we can't really talk about the film without talking a little bit about its uh, kind of internet meme memory. memory, memory, yeah. memory. This, is, this is where this place was born. It was born on the sort of, well, this particular rumour, the Slender Man. Not rumour, it's just a short story. And, you know... Back in the day before the internet, this would have just been a, a short story. People would have picked up and either liked it or not, and, and then that would have been the thing. But internets are internets, and things like this sort of spread and grow. And unfortunately, there was a, a, a 
a tragedy uh, or a crime committed by a couple of young kids. Um, we won't go into because it it's not worth giving the publicity for it. But um, so there was controversy around this, which is probably to explain the sort of low key. Uh, let's sneak this out. I mean, it wasn't as low key as sort of like the interview or anything like that, but it did get like a like a pass, I guess. It was like, well, we've made it. We're going to put it out, but because of the the crime um, we're not going to really publicize it at all but it's one of those things where they didn't really i don't know they kind of um picked up on its its origins of the internet i mean they obviously find the video that does it on the internet and, and there's some sort of like post boards and stuff which is you know was it creepy pasta was the um the, the, the board that it used to, it was originated that's from. right um so they kind of do so there's no real you know uh fan nod that now it's just you know, they found it on the internet. But um, I have to say, the first ten minutes or so of this film, I wasn't, I wasn't hating it. I was, mm. I was quietly optimistic that this might be one of those films because it didn't do like the horror films we've done before, the Insidious and the Nun. Those ones we done were, were very much of, the, of exactly the same formula. There was like you know, a place it was bad because of bad things, and then randomly things make you tr- shit your pants because yeah. they would jump out of things and they'd be a lad. Like, but you know, the first 10 minutes of this film and I'm like, actually they've not done this here. They've, you know, they, they, the soundscape was good. I enjoyed that. The, the noises in it were unique and storytelling, I think is a good thing for those the noises. They were, they were important. Yeah. I just, and, the, and the performances, right? The, the four main girls, they weren't awful. They weren't like you would expect from a low budget unknown. Right. Um, yeah, I'll touch on, <laughs> I'll touch on a couple of points you've made. The, the, the sound design I thought was, was really good. It was really creepy, especially if you, li- if you watch it on headphones. I mean, I didn't, didn't watch it on the big screen. I watched it on a relatively small screen, but got the gist of it. Um, with the, yeah. F in the sound design and what they physically do with all the creepy wood sounds. And I talked to you, we said this before in Winchester, but I love the sound of creaking wood. <laughs> you do love the sound well, of creaking wood. Um, this had it in abundance and it was, it was, oh. it was pleasing to the ear. Um, creaking and the cracking wood as well, not just... Yeah, yeah. And uh, it starts, as you say, with a, you know, a fair bit of foreboding because they have like a noise or a, or a deep rumbling sound that, that you kind of associate with the Slender Man's presence or something. A lot of these... Yeah horror tropes do the same thing you know um like a sort of a little sound design or sound bite that, that kind of leads you to to thinking that he's he's present or he's around and yeah yeah the, the foreboding it helps where, the misdirection every now and again doesn't it because yeah you know, yeah and uh, i think yeah it sets it sets itself up quite nicely and certainly doesn't pander to you know a lot of the intros that you get from these sort of movies um, quite, nice, not, quite nicely shot as well, right? It was like a, yeah, few, I, I think, you know, the advent of drones has made that like what we used to be, you know, like a shining kind of, you know, follow up a road up the, you know, Kubrick only style, hired 15 helicopters and, you know, a couple of boons and some weird wire work to make sure the camera tracks. Now you can just chuck a fucking GoPro on a drone and pull off exactly the same shot. Yeah, you get some great, nice. Yeah, you get some nice aerial uh, shots of the of the of the woods and the forest. I mean, uh, the actors and, and the actresses in in the movie are are fine. I mean, they they all look like they could hold a do better with a, a better script. Um, yeah, the, the lines are blunt and perfunctory. They are there's not a great deal of substance to any of it. I mean, they they literally explain to each other what's happening, what they should do. And what they shouldn't do and no one at any point really argues with well they do argue but they did not they're not really no one ever decides to do something like radical like go and speak to a human parent person <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of things that, that really bugs me about it and that was the lighting because one of the first scenes where they set up a, a family they set one of the characters and her sister and their mother and father and they're sat having dinner and but they sat having dinner in the dark and then once you i want i noticed it they had lamps on every here there and everywhere so they couldn't they really couldn't see what they were eating it was that dimly lit (laughs) no one eats dinner 
in the dark, unless you're watching, you know, you've got a TV dinner and you're watching a movie or something that happens to occur. It's definitely not as a family dinner, right? You go, no. right, everyone gather in the darkness. We're going to eat some food. We're not sure yeah. what it is. Uh, once I noticed it, uh, and I, I wrote it down on the notes that I now can't find because the Slender Man's uh, sabotaged this podcast so far. Nicked it. Yeah. Once I noticed it, it was a reoccurring an issue because as soon as anyone enters a room that's dark, they don't turn a light on. They find the smallest darkest dimmest lamp and stick it on and there's a couple of scenes where things are going on downstairs you know she's one of the characters is you know can you know hear the presence of a of a being uh, a spooky a spooky uh, scene and and instead of you know what a normal person would do is walk around and turn every light on they they just yes. walk around in a dark in the dark and no one does that and it, it annoys me i think you can still be spooky with the lights on, I guess. Well, I, guess, I, I don't know. With the lights on, yeah, yeah. But it, it's not. I mean, yeah. I mean, that that that's something that we can't level just at this film. I mean, I think the walk around with no lights on kind of thing is in every. I know, but I, I know, but Matthew, it's not just their fault. But I mean, it's one of these things that is like a small hill to die on, isn't it? It's like people make. Oh, we've said this before, but people make stupid decisions, and <laughs> the, the the girls in this film make bad decision after bad decision. I mean, the first thing they do is summon, summon the Slender Man by watching this video and making humming noises or listening to these weird bells. This is when the film started to fall apart for me. They decide to uh, watch this, the, the Slender Man video. This is how you summon the Slender Man. Um, he's got full 21st century. I mean, it's no longer the Candy Man just saying his name five times. Is it five times the Mirror Candy Man? Well, I wrote, yeah, but I wrote down the exact same thing. I wrote Candyman and, and Nightmare on Elm Street. The whole summoning of the, of the, of the, the yeah. baddie is, it was just, oh God. But they did, they, theirs is a weird one. So they, they, they have instructions. They have instructions. So they got to put the video on, watch it in silence, not allowed to say anything. That's what it says. And, and then you hear the first bell Then you've got to be silent watching it. And then on the second bell, you've got to close your eyes and still not say anything. And on the third bell, you've got to open your eyes and um, not say anything. I'm not sure. Um, or then you, then you got to open your eyes and look for him. It's they, don't do, they don't do any of this, right? So as soon as they go, they're still narrowing. Um, someone, after the second bell, opens their eyes going, why are we doing this? This is ridiculous. And then on the third bell, they kind of open their eyes at the same point, but they don't see him and stuff. And then they have like these weird symbols flash, uh, which was quite cool. I kind of liked the, the visual effect of that. But... So it shouldn't have worked. It's like summoning the candy man, but saying condy man and only doing it four times. It's, it shouldn't have worked. There's, yeah. there's instructions for a reason, people. And like these kids think they can get away with anything, man. Yeah. <laughs> they're just not prepared to put the effort in. You know what their secret is? Oh, yeah? Do you tell? So they're getting together tonight at Tom's house in his garage to summon Slender Man. Creepy. Who's Slender Man? Hey, he's, he's the guy who makes all those kids disappear. Why have I not heard of this? That's a much longer conversation. <laughs> Listen. True. <laughs> Slender Man can manifest in a variety of forms. Certain accounts speak Slender of a hypnotic man. power that renders his victims helpless to stop themselves from walking into waiting arms. While his origins and motives are completely unknown, he preys upon innocent youth. Once you see him, you're his. Some he takes, some he doesn't. Nobody knows why he takes who he takes or why he leaves who he leaves, but the ones he leaves behind are messed up forever. All right, here it is. How to summon Slender Man. Guys, we so have to do this. We actually don't. Actually. If they're doing it, we're doing it. Oh, this feels wrong. This feels like Russian malware -y virus oh, type no. shit. <laughs> Come on, don't be such a wuss. Those who hear the three bells toll accept his invitation. When you hear the first, you must close your eyes, keeping words unspoken. If one wants to hear, you must listen closely, for they are soft and distant. With eyes still closed and mind wide open, clear your thoughts and await the second. Opening your eyes only once you've heard the third. 
This is such an overcomplicated plot device because when you include technology into yeah. the spooky display, it loses so much credibility because it's not just the fact they have to watch the video and and then he you know there's other bits in it where there's a clearly the, is is it the the slender man who's texting people is it the slender man that's videoing them through a phone i mean how is yeah. it I mean, what's he doing? How is he able to do that? And what is it? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And you, you would, for me, that just sort of took away any of the spookiness about it. It's like, well, okay, so how does the fucking Slender Man with his massive long fingers bring up the text messaging thing on his iPad or for iPhone? It would need a stylus. He must have a, like a Samsung. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, that, that, was, that just kind of took some of the credibility away. And the story's crap. I mean, it, I'll... <laughs> Uh, it is a trope on, you know, the old sort of, yeah, Candyman folklore of the of the demon. If you summon him, he's going to come. He's either going to haunt you, he's going to he's going to drive you mad and make you hurt yourself, or he's going to take you away, make you disappear. That was kind of three things that this Slender Man does, and obviously that happens to the girls eventually in this movie. Uh, you know, they're driven slowly mad or see yes. doing. So the the first one that goes missing is Katie. So they all sort of complain about feeling not right. And then they're on a school trip somewhere. And then yeah. this is when the, the film lost me at this exact point. This is the first note I wrote. Because up until this point, I'm like, fine, I'm on board with this. There are some obvious, you know, conceits that they're falling down onto. That's not a problem. I mean, most films you can look at and go, oh, God, why is he in a spaceship? Um, that's fine. I've got no real issues with this. This lost me because they were walking together. And like... Th- that they've been cast all four of these as like the closest best friends like you know a paint stripper couldn't you know separate them they are loyal to each other to the end right so they're walking mm. along and uh, clearly none of them are right but katie's clearly very much worse off than the rest of them distracted moody you know <laughs> teenager so she's like just staring into the woods and like they go are you all right and she goes uh, oh, oh uh yeah um, and then the next thing you see is she's gone missing. So at some point, they've just fucked off and left her. Yeah. Like, they've just gone, they've noticed she's not right. And they've gone, well, you know, man down, off we go. Yeah, they're, all, they're all on the coach, aren't they, ready to get home. And then... Um, and and even the way they squeeze out of the scene, like Chloe and ha- Hallie are kind of, I think, coming in a sort of like arm and arm walk. Um, the fact that they kind of just step sideways out of shot as well it really annoyed me because it yeah. was just like they, they just so quickly tried to create this gap where you know where katie could go missing um and create a bit of mystery uh that it was just oh it was just, it was just and it was like oh that's it i'm gone I, I can't like it's a tiny thing it's like you say small hills to die on. this is a tiny thing like and all they had to do was leave it till night time or something for her to go missing and then, yeah. you know, then there would have been a bit more of a discovery piece. There's so yeah. many sort of dangling threads in this film. It's just... Well, the nuts. whole... I mean, the ending is, a, is the biggest dangling thread. I mean, I won't get to that yet, but it's the most disappointing ending. I think even, even if the film was half decent, you'd be pissed off if you were really enjoying this. 
what did you think of you know the slender man the the actual the dude um it, I, I don't think we saw enough of him i mean what i mean by that is i i quite liked a lot of his appearances i liked um there was a scene with uh ren's character in the library where it was quite well done in the sense that it wasn't always the the obvious jump scare sometimes they just came straight at you because he was slender they could quite easily hide him in plain sight by just going out of focus and having him stand next to something tall and thin like a yep. tree or a crack in the wall you know wall or something like that and then he could just walk forward that was kind of cool kind of like that he was all right right yeah um, yeah yeah and i think yeah <sighs> I just don't like the way he had a suit. And I just don't know why he had a tie on. I mean... Because <laughs> he does on the internet. <laughs> yeah, but why? Why would you create a, a spooky man have him to, but to have him wearing a suit with a tie? Well, because he's scary to teenagers. And nothing represents scary to teenagers like a sense of responsibility, which is what the suit and tie represents. All right, I guess so. But he's got no face, this man. He no can't. face. Yes. Which apparently is insanely scary, and if you look at No Face, you become mad instantly. Yeah, his his soundtrack, if you like, or his, his sound, the, the sound design around him was okay, like I say. And I think some of the little bits they did with him, the creepy long fingers and how he, you know, he, as you say, how he appears, not unlike, you know, some of the insidious movies and how they work, the kind of creepiness in the background and then, you know, the foreshadowing of it and seeing, a, a, yeah, like you've just said, a figure coming out of the darkness. That that was all well and good. Uh, I just don't think he was scary enough. I mean, it, 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 sometimes the, the 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 lack of a face just just kind of um, it just doesn't really sort of ignite any kind of. No, and there error. was there was kind of I think because it was, so it's implied that Katie actually got taken because she wanted to. So they they found another video which um, kind of showed her like um meeting the the slender man apparently you can't get taken the first time you meet him you have to meet him arrange for a time to get taken is it by text message obviously then there's this kind of like idea that this is this is contract between the slender man and its victims in the sense that they only takes people who want to be taken in some fashion katie's character they find her laptop um she has piss poor password security by the way because everyone can just get into her laptop straight away mm -hmm. um <laughs> I mean, no, come on, kids, you know, upper and lower case, special character, and at least two numbers, right? <laughs> um, so they get into it, and then they find out she's been chatting with this, uh, this person online, telling her, like, she's like the world's authority on Slender Man and telling her how to meet the Slender Man and get taken by the Slender Man. It, it, it wasn't scary because it seemed like unless you wanted to be taken by this thing, then you're never going to get taken. But like I say, then that gets quickly jettisoned later on for just standard hunt them down one by one it falls flat on its ass um, at the end uh, like i say the main character or what you think's the main character just disappears she's just not she's the yeah. one you know, egging everyone on that they've got to do this certain amount of things to be able to get to rescue the other characters that have gone mad or whatever uh, joey king's character ren um, in the last sort of third or last quarter of the movie, she just disappears. And then Haley, who kind of, where well, he's her best mate, it just does all the work. And it's, it's kind of just just centres on her. It's almost like it's her movie at the end. Um, yes, but it, isn't that a bit weird? Because obviously we meet um, Hallie and Katie right at the start and they seem like out of like this close group of four. And I didn't like the way they, this, the, these four girls fell apart as well. I think if they'd have stayed friends throughout this thing it would have been a much more interesting film but like i say she just completely disappears for the final third yeah you don't, see I don't even know where she went i can't no, remember no, no. they have an argument in the street uh, about having yes. to do something she says i don't want to do this anymore and she's like, oh you've got no choice sort of thing and then that's it we don't see her again not even at the end okay i've got some example of dumb dialogue here if you if you want a bit go on then um, dialogue this really annoyed me so this is I, I think this is when they're referring to chloe or uh this is when ren starts getting deep into the mythology of cinema and the other kids uh, are not quite so um, up on it and she describes it as like a virus like like a computer virus but instead of your hard drive he takes over your brain and that, my, my head just exploded this point because they used the word virus that's all you need to use it's like a virus yeah. You don't need to say like a computer because 
Computer virus have just stolen the word from virus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a virus. Yeah. Oh, it's like a computer it... virus, but instead of taking over your computer, it, you know, it, it makes you ill. <gasps> what? Like a virus? <laughs> yes, like a fucking virus. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's because they're all, they're kind of over. They're trying to bring it into the into the modern you know technology. Like, how can we make this really obvious? Yeah, <laughs> kids use computers, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use computers. They're they're aware um, computer viruses. Are they aware of normal viruses? No, God, no. Kids don't know about normal viruses anymore. And then she bangs out the line: "We got to do something because the police have no leads." How the <laughs> fuck does she know? They kind of go into sleuth mode, don't they? And uh, she's oh, yeah. doing, checking people's la- laptops and computers and just skulking around the streets where there are no fucking extras. Um, <laughs> and again, no lights. Uh, it's, I mean, the crime rate in Massachusetts, wh- wh- is it set in Massachusetts? Am I right? I think um, so, yeah. it, it must be through the fucking roof because no one, you know, it's prime for robbers and muggers because there's no street lamps they just walk around <laughs> jump out on an old granny nick a handbag and leg it and no one knows the fuck where you are <laughs> but um, it's a brilliant place to do some um stargazing because there's uh, no light pollution it'd be wonderful for that it, 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 well, well that's so the, the romantic in you finds that the positive thing to say about star <laughs> that it just annoyed me and they were tapping on windows and, and adults just don't exist in this world no one's out after eight o'clock it's it's a weird setup. At one point, they're walking before kind of the end. They have this argument, the two, the two sort of mainish characters, and uh, before kind of uh, she disappears for the rest of the movie. Um, and they're walking down the middle of the road. I mean, we, it's so badly lit. There's no traffic. No other people walking a dog, having a run. It's just what? Where, where is this? What time is this? It's just ridiculous. It's like three in the morning or something. In which case, their parents were saying, "Where the fuck are you?" Yeah, some, some child you know, just went missing. Yeah, <laughs> this is kind of thing with this. You know, you're supposed to hang it up, aren't you, before you go in? It's like you know, you put you you, you put your jacket and your keys and everything, or whatever we've on the side. For it's just like if it's a good film, if there are other parts of it that transport you, or if that capture your imagination, or just interest you, then you let these things slide. I mean, like you know, otherwise, um, no so would ever be popular like Star Wars would be a massive pile of shit if you just sat there and went why is that a tractor beam you can't have a tractor beam because you'd need like equal and opposite force so the Death Star would be dragging itself around everywhere you need something and as soon as you don't have that thing whatever that thing is then you start looking at these things and go, well, that's fucking ridiculous. That's fucking stupid. What I mean is, it, is it acceptable to still have the lazy, that, that kind of lazy writing and uh, filming in, in this day of horror and uh, spooky films? Because you look at the comparisons and films of that, that kind of, that are, I guess, in the same uh, bracket as this movie. So, you know, yeah. um, The Ring and um, Insidious and, you know all those other genres where other movies where it just feels like a little bit more effort goes into creating a, the, the 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 atmosphere and the dynamic and and nowadays this kind of movie is a little bit lazy and and, and um unacceptable really i guess because if you you know you look at in Infol- it, it follows i think we mentioned it in our predator episode actually and how the, the relentlessness of that demon or that ghost and how spooky they make it by setting it in you know the daytime and having a real yeah, threat yeah. And being ever present and this is the same thing but they use they use the tools you know of storytelling in such a more um well yeah because even to the point that like halfway through the film we have and it's just so oh god why are we even bothering why like did they even think about being slightly original we have the standard research scene Oh god, I wrote that down. Yeah, oh, research. For fuck's sakes! It's like, and like, she's gone to a library to do it. Mm. Why? Why has she gone to a library to do it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everything they found out so far have been uh, internet based. Um, yeah, they're all wired up, and even she's in the library on the fucking internet, and yeah. then she does one of those wonderful searches on the internet of like, show me everything to do with the thing I'm looking for right now. And yeah. then, like, you know, you know, slideshow after slideshow of, like, oh, this man, this man, oh, the Pied Piper of Hamlin, uh, all this old picture, picture of a demon, uh, old stuff, uh, uh, old stuff. And then she finds some random reference to a book 
uh, on the internet called The Bioelectric Systems and the Paranormal by Jeremy M. Woodward. It's just like, oh, this guy knows who he is. So um, instantly, two shelves away, where's that fucking book? There it is. Yeah. Nicely done. Um, obviously, it's required reading that book, you know, next to the Da Vinci Code. Here yeah, we yeah. have the bioelectric systems of, and the paranormal. Did you notice how dimly lit the, the library was? <laughs> Again, instead of having full light, fluorescent light, so you could see what you're reading, they yeah. dotted around the library are these very moody orange. And if there's any room that you need lit properly, it's yeah. a re- you you're reading. Uh, excuse me, I can't see the title I'm looking for because the fucking lights aren't on. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, is that she gets, she manages to find this book. This book's huge. It's like an A4 size and it's a good, it's a good wedge. I'm saying there must be 600 pages in there. So she flicks through and um, happens to come across a really relevant page to her. Because I know this is relevant because we only ever see that page of the book going forward. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. She looks at it and goes, oh yeah, this is, this is what's happening. This is exactly what's going on. Um, and then later on, she's, she turns up a bit crazy talking to Hallie and like the same page is outlined like with roughly scrawled notes. Um, this is one of the dangling threads that was kind of put across. So we had the internet person, and we kind of found out later on she was just someone else that was terrorized by the Slender Man who ends up killing herself, but we never see that actually happen. Uh, she just, all, all that happens is the, the account goes offline, which is fucking weird. We have this author of this book, and you kind of feel that, you know, um, I don't know if they suddenly realized, oh my God, we're going to go down another absolutely hack-eyed horror um, trope in that we're going to turn up a savant who's going to help save the day. And it's just like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. So the, the book thing never really goes anywhere either, apart from as being her one-page reference. Yeah, I was expecting, uh, you say, for her to, to turn up at the author's house and even go, what do you want? You better come in. <laughs> uh, well, these things are happening. Well, did you watch the video? Have you yes. seen this and this and this? <laughs> Did you close your eyes? Yeah. Did you wait for the three bells? Yeah. Well, we kind of did two bells and then the board on the third one. Okay. Well, it's irrelevant because <laughs> yeah, it what comes you anyway. Did you, did you like the video? <laughs> um, did you leave a comment? Oh, no, we didn't leave a comment. Oh, then you're a fucking asshole. You deserve to die. Did you leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down? <laughs> Spoiler time, because I'm just going to, I know we've spoiled it already, but it, we haven't really gone plot for plot, so you could still watch nah. this and be surprised by some of it. But I'm just going to spoil the ending, because the last all few images of the ending I thought were pretty well done and, and a little bit reminded me of Evil Dead, uh, even that and then the remake of Evil Dead as well, where she becomes, she's being chased by the Slender Man and it's kind of like a big, he kind of morphs into like a massive tree man, doesn't he? With lots of spidery legs and things. And it's kind of the yeah. crescendo of the movie. This is not the main character, by the way. This is the, the other character, as we say. And then she's kind of um, uh, absorbed, I would say, into the tree, uh, into him or into the tree. And the way, the way that the, that works uh, on screen and the way it's filmed is, was, was pretty creepy. And it was, was, it was a good yeah. lasting end image. It's not, I mean, it doesn't bring any closure. You're just thinking something else is going to happen. She's going to be okay. Um, she's going to fight it from the inside or whatever. But yeah, no. I mean, this is why I kind of had a, a little bit of issue as well at the end here because uh, she, the, the Halley character becomes um, heroic, I guess, and the Ripley of the piece uh, because her little sister Lizzie got tricked by Red into also um, doing a thumbs up on the Slender Band video. So. Uh, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> She's liked and subscribed. Um, so Lizzie um, is being terrorised. So um, and then because we've had that dangle, uh, that dangling thread, which never got taken up, which means that you know you can, if you sacrifice something, then you can make him go away. Um, Hallie sort of realises that she needs to finish things off by um, doing uh, meeting the Slender Man and sacrificing herself. So she she walks up, to, she finds the Slender Man, and she's like, "Take me!" And then it it goes, Ugh. and then she goes. And then fucking legs it. <laughs> it's like, what did what did you want to do? Yeah. I don't understand. I mean, she obviously, to be chased. Yeah, run, run after me. Let's let's just eke out the last fifteen minutes of this movie. 
Um, and something that you need to cut in here as well is that towards the end of the film, they use a, a specific camera shot where it's kind of a, I guess it's a body cam. In my head, I start going, because it's the sort of chickens Caesar Digby cam from the Slim Web experience. So please find a clip of that and clip that in here because the last third of the film is her just running around like a chicken Digby Caesar. Just over here, we must fight the Slender Man. Fear and greed on streets greased with blood and tears. Who is left to look out for the little guy and see if he's got any money on him? Yes, it's the surprising adventures of me, Sir Digby Chicken Caesar. <laughs> Completely lifelike. Is that the point? <laughs> The story so far, I've successfully couriered the top secret machinery back to its rightful owners of the heart of government. You must die at my club sometime. <laughs> but now my thoughts inevitably turn to my trusty companion, Ginger, who is not so lucky at the hands of our pursuers. I'm pissing blood again. You still lost the bloody tally, didn't you? I've got the remote. We can melt the batteries down and drink it. Excellent. We can borrow a Bunsen from my old school. Oh, no, sir. Let's not get electronically tagged again. Nonsense. <laughs> Having infiltrated my old school, how will my nemesis strike next? Hoovering up all the gutter change with so-called street sweepers? More of that sort of bench that you can't lie flat on? Find out next week in The Surprising Adventures of Sir Digby Chicken Caesar. I think we got the makings of crystal meth here, sir. It's going to be an Easter week. Weekend to remember. Box of his stats. Okay, actually, is all right. They made it for around ten million. You can see, obviously, huge savings in cast and unknowns there. Yeah, I mean, from, yeah. From me, like for, that's that's well lower than uh, the other horror films that we've done. I took eleven in the opening weekend in US gross US thirty million gross worldwide fifty one million. Um, filmed in our favourite aspects ratio of 2.39 to 1. And um, you'd be surprised to hear, Chris, mm. uh, d- despite the darkness, it was actually filmed in colour. No fucking way. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. in a very low, um, dingy, dark orange colour. <laughs> it's um, like mostly muted. Yeah. Technical specs as well, You just to mention, it is 93 minutes long, which is always good. Always good to get it on that hour and a half. If it's going to be bad, at least you can be short. This could have been a Netflix short as part of a, a like a an anthology of spooky stuff. It could have been a 30, 40 minute long. Um, I think, and I, 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 we we talked briefly about the cast and the director. But I, what did it, has the director done anything else before? Yeah, he's done some decent. Oh, sort of. He does. He's done a load of TV, loads of TV episodes of American sort of crime dramas and stuff like that. Yeah, loads. Uh, what do they call them? Procedural dramas and that. He's done loads of that. Yeah, this may be why this film is like this. It's because, as I say, the first ten minutes of this film is not bad. And, and and I have to say, out of all the horror films we've seen, I think this is the best. No, which one was better? I, I enjoyed Insidious more. It was more creepy. Really, the, the uh, last key, the 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 the, go, the, the, the last key lady with the with. He no, can't shush. That was what was scary about it. The whole, the, the, her ability to shush without lips was one of the most scariest things I've ever seen. Uh, I, I I I preferred this one because it was less. It was it was less by the numbers, which is saying something horrible about those other films that we've seen. Well, actually, um, the other thing that's missing from this. Sorry to interrupt you, but the, that film had, right. had, that film had a comedy. A comedy element that had they tried to inject a little bit of humor when yeah there was no humor in this no film. yeah like, exactly. no intentional humor there was no light relief i'm mark kermode and i listen to the movie bunker podcast it must be time for the reviews then it could only be time for the reviews hold on let's see if we can count up the reviews by closing our eyes and waiting for the reviews the first sound you hear will be chris saying here's the reviews and then the second then open your eyes and then listen some more and then you'll hear matt go i i can't remember if i found one or not and then open your eyes and turn around three times and then um chris will say i've got one and then 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 you can just listen to the reviews um yeah <laughs> Imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger. Whoa, this is going dark. <laughs> reading from IMDb pages. 
have you got have you got one then i mean obviously these are going to be 10 out of 10 reviews from the yeah 10 out of 10s because we thought it's shit so we have to balance we have to um my 10 out of 10 was saw this yesterday great movie by chase brown 39779 i'm going to ask this this review in the style of barry homeowner (laughs) oh great (laughs) saw this review yesterday great movie sure have your opinion but my opinion (laughs) it was a great movie sure this this might do bad in sales in November, which is when the Blu-ray is released. My dad thought it was alright. I thought it was a great movie. I was barely even scared. I was only scared of the two previews, Overlord and the Nun. But anyways, this movie was awesome. I'm looking forward to the release date on Blu-ray, where I can join it with my cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that last bit wasn't in there, but yeah. It, the fact that he wasn't scared for like a horror film, right? That's that's not a good thing, right? It's, I laughed the whole way through. <laughs> you know, it's, that's that's not a good sign, mate. That you know. Mine is titled "I Damn Near Pulled My Pants." <laughs> okay, right. So yeah, leave Arnie at home and bring a hick. <laughs> that's not the full title. I damn oh. near pulled my pants. In brackets, definitely peed. <laughs> I'll apologise to our American listeners. This was my first scary movie I've ever seen, and I'm 19. Throughout the whole movie, I couldn't control bowels. <laughs> Kept me on the edge of my seat the entire movie. I would recommend this movie to anyone of my homies. So that's it for the Movie Bunker podcast. Next episode is going to be a interview special, which we'll release and drop more information on it as and when. Um, but it's a good one. Next movie, I guess we're going to have to think about, aren't we? Again, uh, something will happen. Um, yeah, because we've been. I think I don't know if we can just leave it to that because we, we've we, we got a bit spoiled over the summer with all of our sort of hits coming out with the Predator, uh, Holmes and Watson, Holmes and Watson, a man. Yeah. So, and do you think now- we should we should commit ourselves to something here and now? Oh wow! Well, I don't know. We should go that far. <laughs> no, okay, fine. So we, we've got we've got plenty of um, films that we've we've got in the back. But feel free to suggest. I mean, we're open to suggestions. Yeah, come on, get involved. The other thing as well. I mean, you may if you follow us on social media, and I know you do because you, you're constantly uh, letting us know that. I put a tweet and a, and a Facebook thing out the other day, and if you'd like to supply content, content in way of a a quick short vox pop, by all means send it to us to the movie bunker podcast at gmail.com. If you've just seen a crap movie or you've walked out of the cinema and you've just seen a rubbish flick, or you can mention any of the ones we've seen in our back catalog, that's fine. And you've wanted to watch it out of curiosity. Let us know. Or, what or if you saw a film that what everyone else said was shit and you actually were like, nah, I like that. Exactly. Yes. Brilliant idea. Send us a 30 to 60 second audio recording on your iPhone uh, send it as an mp3 or a wav or whatever send us the email address <laughs> and we'll pop it in the show and you'll get a shout out as well on our social media links so get involved we want you we want to hear your voices wherever you are in the world um it's quick and easy to do as well and also yeah at the same time you know if you don't like subscribe and listen download and interact with us the slender man is going to drive you slowly insane it's it's going to happen so i guess until next time then it's watch a shit film and uh, tell us about it that's our new motto that's a great catchphrase watch a shit film and tell us about it <laughs> goodbye uh, and don't watch forget it. it's very <laughs> spooky outside and Dracula might come behind the bush and, do- and there might be a witch in that bin so walk in the middle of the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes exactly yes yeah uh, witches in bins I mean that is that is a scary horror film in itself. although I have to say there's probably more chance you being mowed down by a reckless driver then it is of getting eaten by a witch from a bin. Um, don't, well, I don't know, mate. I don't know. But I was going to say, this time of year, October, and, you know, with Guy Fawkes Night and Halloween and everything like that, just sends people in fucking insane, doesn't it? It's mental. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. Um, it's the mad streets, though. It's like the purge. That's what I say. It is like the purge every year. I My kids go out and do a bit of trick-or-treating, and um, I, I worry for their safety, but I know... You know, if they stick to the local roads, it's okay. They don't go too far into the woods or whatever, then it's going to be trouble. But um, <laughs> the, the the fact that I'm, I'm nervous to open my door when when I get the knock, because it's usually me that stays home, and it's the tap, tap, tap. And then the other, last year, I've got a porch, right? Last year, yeah. the porch door was closed. It always closed, right? So you don't 
you know, that's not an invitation to and you know, if you've got a porch you don't go in do you last no. year i had children coming into my house without even without even me opening the door do you know what i mean it was like they were in the house before i could even get it off <laughs> it's like fuck off the porch door is closed you don't just come on in it's like you know help yourself to the coach and the shoes and the fucking i don't know 10 year old <laughs> yeah. and they look at you like you go and i say sorry guys it's the end of the night there's not much here and they look at you and go you fucking what it's like there's a few dregs but i'm afraid that's it i've got some grapes and they're like, I, I don't mind the kids i just it's the teenagers with like token effort all right my colleagues trick or treat you're like what are you meant to be yeah, but the thing is you can't say anything to them because you're a person of a belligerent future oh yeah. all right take my sweets Oh, you got my iPhone as well. Brilliant, yeah. yeah, yeah don't stab me. <laughs> 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 um, but you worry about uh, saying anything to them or complaining because, I mean, I've had eggs thrown at my house before and uh, around, on, on Halloween and, and uh, just by youths or reckless dudes. Uh, you just don't want to say anything, do you? You can't just say, no, fuck off. You're not having any sweets because you're not five. And they go like, all right, mate, it's a fucking turd. And a post to get a box and set it on fire or something. Um yeah, so uh, well, not to paint, uh, paint paint everyone in the same brush, but uh, anyway, this is getting edited out, so I don't know what I'm bothering. So uh, this is boring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> From the old bastards. <laughs> so take uh, take care, Matthew. Enjoy your week. I will. Thanks, mate. Cheerio. <laughs> Bye. Bye.